that was, you know, that's, that's the thing where the network says, okay, you have to have someone introduce the episode because you need to explain to the audience that their sets aren't broken. And um, so I'm thinking, oh, who should we get? And I'm thinking, well, who better than Orson Welles? So we called, I mean, I literally got a phone number. For, and I thought Sybil, because Sybil was always saying she knew Orson Welles. But this was during a period where we weren't, she wasn't speaking to everybody. So I forget where I got his number, but I called him, a youth and, you know, all that stuff. And I said, you know, Mr. Wells, uh, I couldn't believe I had him on the phone. I I'd love you to do this thing. And he said, well, why don't you write something up and send it to me? So I wrote him this thing and it, he was so tickled with it. He said, I'll do it. It was truly one of the highlights of my life. This thing we wrote was really kind of funny and perverse. It was this whole thing where he says, he says uh, something like, <clears throat> and, and tonight, a monochromatic blah, blah. I mean, he's all this stuff. And he says, he's, he's talking about how exciting it's going to be. He says, so get grandma and the kitties and lock them in the basement. And it's all, it, was a, it was very funny. And so he's going to do this thing. And Jay Daniel comes to me and he says, who's going to direct him? And I said, oh, what's the big deal? He's going to sit in a chair. And he said, it's Orson Welles. I hear he's really a prick. <laughs> I said, I'll direct him. <laughs> so comes the day. And this huge, like, Bonneville with mammoth doors <laughs> pulls up, and the door opens, and he's in the passenger seat. And he's got, he had gout. He was very ill. Mm -hmm. His sh shoes were like the size of bread boxes. It was clearly painful for him to move. And they get him in the sound stage, and they get him in this chair. He's, he was enormous. And I worked out a thing with the prop guy where, as, after I take if I pull on my ear, he should drop something. And I go, oh, that was perfect. I, can I, can we do another? Because I was just terrified to have to ask this guy to, because I'd heard he was just, you know, the nicest man. He was so thrilled to be there. And I think we did six or seven takes. He said, Don't, do you need another? He was so, it was such a charmed experience. And the, the rafters of the soundstage were filled with people. They all came to see. And, and, and after it was over, we yelled cut and that we had it. Um, People started coming at him, and a guy would come up to him and say, hi, my name is Woody so-and-so. And he'd say, Woody so-and-so. I had a gaffer named Woody. And he'd say, yeah, that was my dad. I mean, it was, just, it was just the most emotional, magical. And a week later, he passed away. And that was so sad to me. He was so nice.